Hey guys, welcome back to Life's a Breeze with Matt and Steve. This is Matt and I'm Steve. How you doing? So today, we've got a pretty cool segment for you. Um, we're we're going to be drinking quite a bit of stuff tonight. Um, we're going to give you a little bit of a rundown on each of it. And we thought we'd switch it up and do rum. We haven't done a rum episode yet. We keep saying we're going to do a rum episode. Tonight is the night for that rum episode. It's also August, so those fall beers are starting to come out a little early. Oof. But they're here. Yeah. Uh, I picked up the Southern Tier Warlock uh, Imperial Pumpkin Stout. Absolutely my favorite pumpkin beer. Go ahead and put it in. Uh, give him a close-up of that Go guy. close-up of that one. Southern Tier Warlock. That's, so, a, that's a good one, man. Southern Tier makes an excellent beer. They do. They specialize in more of the dessert beers. Uh, but, man, do they nail it. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, but that pairs really well with rum. So uh, Now, it is a great pumpkin beer. Uh, I really like the coffee pumpkin by them as well. I know Steve. Uh, the coffee Steve's pumpkin. All about it. So their pumpkin beer uh, is—it's a good beer. Their coffee pumpkin is a great beer. The Warlock is probably their best of their beers, uh, especially for this time of year. That's not stacking it against their other stuff. Just no. this time of year specific flavors. Um, Hard to come by too. I was actually fortunate enough to be standing in the liquor store yeah. at 11 a.m. when the guy came in with it on the two-wheeler cart. And I asked him if I could grab a four-pack of that. So, and they're not cheap, but they're yeah. totally worth grabbing a four-pack of. You're going to enjoy it. I forget it. what ABV is on this. Oh, one. yeah. No, it's a high guy. 8.6. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, all right, man. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Cheers to you guys. Oh, it's so good. Oh, that's killer. It's so good. It's smooth. It doesn't have a ton of spice in it. And it doesn't overpower you. It reminds you, me a lot of like uh, like a grocery store apple pie or pumpkin pie I already made. Yeah. You know it does, I mean? That's not like a, not like a scratch one. Like, yeah. a, like a real one. Like yeah. Really good. Or the pumpkin can like filling stuff. The, the pumpkin filling is what I was thinking yeah. of. Yeah. With a little bit of extra nutmeg in yeah. there. Uh, you can taste it all the way around. But it's balanced really well. Like, like uh, not one thing just really sticks out. Uh, no, seriously though, as far as beers go, can't get better than that. Good, what, good job, uh, Southern Tier. What are we doing first here, Steve? Um, do you want to start this way and go that way, or start by you and come me, toward me here? How about I kick us off with some uh, Papa Pilar? I'm down. So, because I think yeah, we're gonna have to do the blind. And we're gonna go have to. Darks, that's to that's all yeah. I was thinking. Uh, yeah. But I didn't want to skip from this one to this one and then go back down to those guys. But that's what we're gonna do just to keep it in order. I like it. So, uh, Papa's Pilar Rum. Now I don't know uh, many people that know what this rum is. A lot of people aren't into craft rum, and that's okay. Uh, you don't have to be. Uh, but if I you, do, I do recommend people though who like bourbons and stuff. This is a different kind of market to change up your hobby. It really is. There's and a lot of cool want, stuff out there. If you want something with a strong flavor that's going to have a lot of the undertones that you're looking for in a good whiskey, uh, you're you're going to really enjoy this uh, this rum here. Now, uh, we've got for you tonight, we've got the blonde. <laughs> What's left? What's left of the blonde. So this so is one good. from before. We've got a brand new bottle. So this is the Pilar Dark. Uh, this is uh, sherry cast finished. Now, is that a spice rum? So this one is a dark rum. It is spice, but it is not considered to be a spice rum. Okay. So the spices that they use are subtle, and they are actually in the maceration process, as opposed to uh, like a flavoring added later. Nice. So they actually don't add anything afterward uh, with the Papa Pilar. Awesome. They're all about they're all about the natural flavor of it. Now Papa Pilar's rum or Papa's Pilar rum is. Uh, Ernest Hemingway's rum. So, for those of you that didn't know that, uh, the author and adventurer Ernest Hemingway, this is this is his rum. So he was Papa. So he's Ernest Papa Hemingway. Uh, and I the, bet he'd like it if we called him Papa. If we called him Papa, yeah. Well, I, I bet he'd love it if I called him Big Papa. Yeah. Um, he seems like that kind of guy. He he does. He does. <laughs> uh, now the nice thing I like about the blind. The is blonde. that is also put into uh, bourbon barrels. Yeah. Then it's moved into the sherry barrel. So that's probably my favorite rum ever. And and I'll tell you what, um, it it's so it's like drinking liquid candy. It's you really can't good. get a smoother alcohol pretty much anywhere than Papa's Pilar. 
It's uh, also nice. I'm not a huge mixer, but I have had that with root beer, and it is awesome. Well, why don't you hand me your glass there, bud? And we're gonna start off. We're gonna we're gonna start off with the light, and we're gonna work our way over. Now the Pilar was uh, Hemingway's yacht. Went across the Caribbean in it, and uh, to this day, the Hemingway family donates a percentage of all sales of Pilar's rum. Uh, to charity, because they think it's in keeping with the uh, spirit now, that I, Ernest Hemingway carried with him. I had a weird thing pop into my head. I could be completely wrong on this. Okay. Is it true that his house is sitting there full of cats? I've heard this as well. And <laughs> I, 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 I think he left all his money to his cats. See, I'm, I'm a little... Uh, I hesitate to mention to comment on it because I don't know if that's I know. true. I don't either, but I know this. <laughs> I know this about somebody who lives down in like the Caribbean. Yeah, they have a house. Yeah, they died and they left it to their cats. And right now, <laughs> there's a ton of cats in this house. I wouldn't doubt it. People take care of them. Like, uh, I mean, would you take care of one of Ernest Hemingway's cats? I would. How much I was being paid? I mean, I would just swing by the house just to say, "Hey, I went and fed Ernest Hemingway's cats." You know? Anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to get us off track. But uh, there's a Google thing for you. Check yeah, no. that out. Let us know. You I'm, know? I'm going to when this is over. Uh, cheers, buddy. I have to. It's so good. That's so beautiful. beautiful. It's, got, it's got such a clear, unique flavor to it. It's got rum and, like, vanilla, a little caramel... Like you, you it's sweet and a, from the sherry. Like almost a little it's bit. It's got of a little nutmeg. burn from the bourbon. Like yeah, it's goddamn. All right, that's a good one. So one down, and then without wasting any time. Oh yeah, I got it. Oh oh yeah, no, 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 cleanse the palate, you know. All right, those two went together very well. That was incredible. <laughs> that's you know really why? Good. It was the nutmeg, uh, the subtle undertone of nutmeg in that one. If you didn't know, Steve is tasting nutmeg. Mixed with the subtle nutmeg in here. Nutmeg. Uh, overall, it creates a While pretty... watching this video, I feel like I should have said ahead of time, when Steve says nutmeg, take a drink. Uh, I'm, just, I'm saying, like, as a general thing, though, you know, the overall nutmeg essence of nutmeg that you get when there's a lot of nutmeg in there. Um, how many more times am I going to say nutmeg? <laughs> I don't know, bro. That's okay. Uh, I highly doubt the next one's got nutmeg in it, so we could probably uh, well, let's hope it, off that. Let's hope it does. Let's hope it does. So the Pilar bottles, the one thing I will say, uh, they used to have a chain uh, that went around here. It hung down the side of the bottle. Uh, I don't know why a bottle needed a chain wallet, and I don't care. Uh, on a bottle. It was awesome. It looked amazing. It was so cool. You never lost your cap. It's like a the, canteen. The That's what I like about it. Is that it's shaped like a canteen. That's a really heavy metal cap with a compass on the top. Oh, like, and it's so it's such a heavy bottle. It I mean, it's got heft. It, it, it's a great package. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I do miss the chain because it did feel like a canteen. You could literally just spin it off. Thing would hang down on the side. <laughs> good to go. Now, I've never had this one. Ooh. I've had the regular dark uh, Papa Pilar rum, but yeah. I've never had uh, the sherry cask. Well, this is, yeah, this is the Solera Profile 24. So, the Solera Profile 24 is very unique. Ooh, get some of that nose. No nutmeg, man. No nutmeg. <laughs> you can smell the heat, though. But you, I don't think it's going to give you a lot of heat. I, I can, can smell the heat. I actually, I can, uh, the sherry smell is mm -hmm. coming through a real it's very strong. strong. It's coming through a lot. It's got a nice color on it. The, the darkness uh, on this is incredible. It's got zero legs. <laughs> no legs. Uh, it's actually quite watery. So for those of you that don't know, rum is naturally distilled from sugar cane. Um, so it is a sugar-based liquor. Oh my god, it has everything I want. All right, you love leather. I know. You love leather. I was leather. just about to say that. <laughs> Man. Wow, it's so sweet and smooth and... What? Uh, oh, man. All day. That's, all day. That's crazy. It's creamy. 
I really don't even want to describe that. That is just rad. Oh, man, it got, ooh, gets you all through here. Ooh. Nice, gentle, like, warm sensation. Reminds Absolutely me of something. Phenomenal. Any more of that? Well, I'll, we'll, we'll circle back. No, I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to figure this one out. <laughs> I, I've never had this one. It's really good. You know what, buddy? You get at it. Unlock those mysteries. Thank you. Absolutely. Much appreciated. All right, anyways, give me another second here. Mm. Don't do it. <laughs> that leather. The it's leather the leather. Is so nice. It's really nice. You know what? The first one mixed better with the Warlock, though. I'm at a loss right now, though. I can't pick this one apart. This is... It's blended really well. There's, like, nothing... The sherry is the only thing that sticks out of it. And you get a little bit of dark fruit. A you little do. bit. Uh, but then I there's... Wouldn't, I wouldn't go, like, fig, maybe no. a slight plum. I was going to say plum, plum, but then you get a lot of wood and leather. There is a wood, lot and leather. wood and leather. Uh, two favorite things in my drink. A little right bit there. nutty. Little I could bit. go with nutty, um, like a macadamia nut, kind of. Yeah, something very subtle. Yeah, but uh, was bitter. Yeah. Oh, that is another yeah. one, man. I mean, for real, I can't, I can't talk better about this product. I, I've been a big fan. I've turned a lot of people onto this product. Uh, like Steve said, we don't even know a lot of people that even know what this is. Yeah. If you see it, it, it's worth the bucks. It's not super expensive either. That's the best part. This is something you can drink at least once a month if you really got into it. If you're a rum fan, it's it's an absolute go-to. There's there aren't a lot of rums on the market that could compete with Papa Pilar. No. Uh, all right, Matt. Let's keep moving along. Um, why don't you tell us what we got on uh, your end over here, the Florida Kanya? Which one do you want to do? You want to do the Anejo or you want to do the Twelve Year? No, nah, we're gonna we're we're saving this bad boy for last. Okay, so we are. So another one I've not had. Uh, I'm a big fan. Of the Florida Cana. Uh, they're out of Nicaragua. Uh, this is an Anejo, so this is at least one year aged. Uh, it doesn't tell me exactly how long it's been aged. Uh, I'm just going to get at this, too. Uh, they've been around since 1890. Uh, same family. So, this was a very cheap bottle. It was on sale, if you believe this or not, for $13.99. I, I can't even believe that because... Uh, well, I think it was mismarked. I, yeah, no, and it was <laughs> definitely mismarked. Uh, we got a steal on it, but if you do see it for that price, I mean, absolutely grab, grab it. it. There are other ones this size, too. Uh, this is the first time I've ever seen this bottle. I'm used to the, the wide bottles. The little square whiskey bottles. Yeah. Yeah. So the other cool thing and something that I know I appreciate when it comes to any product that I buy, it's just something about being conscientious uh, in our world market, they are sustainably produced, uh, and they use all free trade practices. Yeah. Uh, huge fan of the way that these people do business. So already, before I even taste this, I'm telling you, I already appreciate it for what it is, even if it's gut rot Well, they're what, horrible. fifth generation, uh, single, single estate? Single estate bottles. So, so I mean, no, 1890 no mistakes to made, now. start to finish, yep. all the same place. The so William Grant product, uh, it's being... Uh, imported out of New York. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, let's do it. From uh, Nicaragua, right? Yeah. yeah, Nicaragua. The base of an active volcano. <laughs> oh, yeah. These are aged at a base of an active volcano. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Volcano rum. Dude, there's nothing to this. It smells good. There's nothing you know, to You know what this smells exactly like? Is that uh, Cat Daddy Moonshine that I had. It, it has a very similar smell to it. It's made this. Uh, it was either really good or really bad because I don't remember that. It was great. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's the problem with me. It's we're going to circle back in another video to that Cat Daddy Moonshine. Uh, big fan. My mom was even a big fan. So right away, I'm getting a lot of sugar. It's sweet. You're right. There's nothing to it. Uh, it's very light. Uh, I, there's no burn. No. That's a really nice rum. It is. Uh, uh, I don't even know how I would drink this, though. It's so light. Like, I wouldn't put a cube in it because it would water it down more and it'd be nothing. I wouldn't mix it because it wouldn't come through with whatever I mixed it with. You know what? You know what I would do with this? Turn it into uh, some kind of a cider drink, maybe. 
because it's it's got a great profile. If uh, you, instead of like a like a pear brandy, yeah, or like an apple rum, an apple rum, an or, or you know, yeah, pear wouldn't work with this. Uh, apple, I think, would work yeah, great with that. Pear might work with this. Um, All this really needs is cinnamon and a fruit. Cinnamon and a fruit, yeah, yep. So, so this would be awesome. But yeah, uh, I'm glad I didn't pay a lot for it because I like a lot more flavor. Yeah. This is very light. I think that might be the lightest rum I have. Right yeah, now. but anybody, anybody can drink this. Yeah. So, so like, because we're used to tasting tequilas, we taste whiskeys, we shoot everything, Rise, bourbon, because we want to give you a, an accurate assessment of how those products taste raw. So uh, this has nothing to it. Anybody can shoot this. Uh, my grandma little, could drink this. Yeah, a little vanilla, a little caramel. Uh, You know what else it has? Nutmeg. I'm not picking up the nutmeg on this one. A little bit. A little bit. You know, when you're when you're doing videos pretending you know what you're doing, <laughs> you can always just say whatever you want because who the hell are you to tell somebody hey, what hey, they can and hey. can't taste? This I also taste uh, traces of uh, coriander. Coriander and lavender. And some lavender? There's no lavender here. There's or coriander. Right. That's just Crazy Carlos. Cheers to you, Crazy Carlos. I'm drinking an empty glass. Oh, the rum's kicking in. Ooh, that's so good. The fucking beer is so good. The, you know what? The Warlock is making everything so much better. I know. I highly recommend the Warlock with rum. I cannot good believe. Rum. I cannot believe how well this beer is blending this with the rum. This is another one that I rep hard. I get into... Arguments with people about pumpkin beers all the time. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it's an imperial stout as the base. Yeah. You can't go wrong from there. And and let me let me just say this because a lot of people are under the impression like okay it's pumpkin flavored and then we all know the joke about the the basic white girl enjoying the pumpkin flavored lattes. Oh yeah, no, We've I felt I felt that. like her at Starbucks yesterday 100%. when I when I got this. I was like, oh, the warlock stout. Yeah. <laughs> I got my Ugg boots and my scarf, you know? Don't ever let yourself not try something that's pumpkin spiced just because it is. Uh, this I, this I is have, one time you'll be kicking yourself if you pass it up. Yeah, I've got... Which one? I have Revel Stoke pumpkin whiskey. Oh. Don't buy it. Garbage. I love Revel Stoke. There's a lot of new products right now. I don't know if you've been paying attention to. We yeah. gotta get our hands on. Oh, yeah. no. You know what? Uh, They've, uh, they came out with those a little bit ago, and they just now became public to us. Which I'm disappointed in. What are you talking about? Um, all of their new flavors that they have. Really? Yeah. Have you seen their new flavors? That's what I just asked you. If you no, I know. <laughs> but like they've they've had those. So when I was when I was working for uh, the last company I was working for, prior to the one uh, that closed for COVID, um, they I, I was on Proby and they had about uh, thirteen flavors. Oh yeah. Uh, thirteen, fourteen flavors, and I I had no idea. Because uh, we've only ever had, uh, what, the apple, the pecan, and the pumpkin. I had a vanilla, uh, the regular whiskey. What else did I have? Oh, how's the regular? Have you tried it? Oh. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Really, I mean, it's just fuck you in the face. I like, bet. They, they don't even give a fuck. They're just like... <laughs> that's why we put flavor in our shit. You know, and you're like, oh, I get it, I get it. No, good for you. Yeah, Understanding no. what your base product is and flavoring it. Uh, you're having a really fucking bad day. That's what you do. It's just self-punishment at yeah. that point, you know? Just to punch yourself but in the face. But I just saw they got Blackberry. There's a uh, there's like some kind of vanilla, Madagascar vanilla. The Mad I saw something. the Madagascar. Uh, I got them on my phone. I've been taking screenshots because I'm just going nuts at yeah. how many flavors there are. Because like I said, I am a fan. I, I am a big I, fan. I didn't mean to get us off way off track there. but uh, No, that's fine. We're, yeah. we, we went off topic talking about Rebel Stoke, also a huge fan. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, I, can, I can totally see that pecan whiskey being... Or the the pumpkin whiskey is not as great as the pecan. Pecan is great for everything. I just the saw pumpkin is only good if you're making cocktails that are pumpkin pie flavored. So I'm getting ready to order. I found a caramel whiskey. Oh, it's thick. Can't uh, see it would have it. to be. No, you can't even see through it. What do you mean? It looks like melted uh, like this. Uh, like Werther's. It looks like melted Werther's in a clear bottle. Well, and it looks like uh, the screwball bottle. My inner grandfather is going nuts right now. Yeah, no, I, everybody should be, like, yeah. It looks ridiculous. I can't wait. Yeah, no, we're uh, we'll be picking that up. So the next one we have here uh, is the twelve year. Last one, guys. Stay uh, with us. Hopefully, hopefully you're not too drunk. You right can now. see by what's left in here. Uh, 
it's a good bottle. We've been trying to save it. When, when, bottle, when our bottles here at the bar uh, get below 50%, we try to explore new opportunities before we go hard at it. And that just puts me back at the liquor store, but yeah. This, this one I really like. And the nice thing is, is all these rums stand on their own. They all have their own thing yeah. going for them, from the blonde all the way to the light Anejo, the sherry cask, and then the 12-year. These are all very different rums, so, but very similar at the same time. So what you get a lot of times that I've found is that uh, the, the, I won't say cheaper varieties of rum, but just the more mass-produced varieties of rum, what they do is they will have a lighter version and a darker version, but it's the same product. They just put it in a barrel, but they didn't even, they didn't really. That's how I feel about, the, what do I got over there? Uh, they Captain, didn't change it. Captain Morgan White. Oh, yeah. I haven't even opened that bottle. Okay, I, uh, I got it. Why, why uh, would you? Somebody gave it to me. It's just Bacardi. Uh, right. Like, without the spice of Captain Morgan, yeah. what are we doing here? Captain Morgan White, man. I mean, and, and don't even get me started on the fucking cannonballs, okay? Oh, oh God. You gotta be a special kind of person. Cheers to you guys. <laughs> this is another one that's very leather forward, which I'm a big fan of, which is why that bottle's almost gone. All right, now that that drinks like a whiskey. It does. It's got a little heat. It's not a lot though. It doesn't burn you in the esophagus. Um, it goes down like a bourbon, and it does like a good bourbon. Like a good bourbon. There's and, and no burn, what, and that's There's also no what I'm noticing with the. Uh, the aged rums, which I'm just starting to get into, uh, I'm used to a lot of like off one year, less than a year bur or, uh, rums. These are definitely becoming interesting to me. Like you said earlier, there's a 25 year. It's not that pricey. I'm probably going to get it. Because uh, what I think, okay, I, I'm not a rich guy by any means, but where I judge liquor prices is very different than most people. Yeah. Uh, we go into a liquor store, and if there's something on sale for under a hundred bucks, uh, very often we'll be like, "Oh my god, what a steal!" Whereas a See, lot of people I'm, go in and be like, "Hey, it's above eighteen dollars. We can't grab it." So Steve uh, is right there. I'm at the two hundred, so I'm just above you. So if it's under two hundred, within five minutes of me talking to myself, I can convince myself that that's a great purchase. Oh, I and, know. And, you and, bought that uh, Roca Patron. So that was ninety nine. Yeah, fuck off. I know. I'm aware. Yeah. I uh, no, but you know, yeah. you set that benchmark. Right. I I I just <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Anyways, you'll if you haven't seen the the Roca Patron Anejo, fucking check that video out. If you haven't watched our Roca Patron, we had a bunch of people try it. Uh, oh, we're I'm not gonna get off topic, but seriously, we're watch gonna, that video. I'm gonna tell you the outcome either. It was great. <laughs> it was fantastic. I like it. You're just you're going through these rums, man. You're burning them. I haven't drank in a couple days. Me neither. You know, everything I, tastes better with the warlock. I haven't had anything to drink since our last video. Uh, I can't say that. But. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's fine though. It's fine. Um, for you that, for you, those of you that know me, you've seen my Instagram and Facebook. I have been. Dabbling, but not a. Uh, if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook at all, if you follow Life's a Breeze with Matt and Steve, you'll see the shit that we normally get up to. Uh, it's it's shameful, almost. In the for best you, of in the best of ways. I own it. In the best of ways. Shameful for Steve. Eh, eh, eh. There's a certain amount of. Uh, all right, so the, it was specifically the Roca Patron night. That, that was a lot of money for not a lot of anything. It happens. I got whiskeys downstairs that did the same thing to me. Occasionally, we will buy something to try it, thinking that, like, cool, there's something new, there's something unique, there's something excellent out there that people want, uh, want you to try, that they put a lot of effort and time into, and you, you buy it, and then you, you buy the just, story. You get really let down. Yeah. Um, uh, thankfully... I bought into the story of the Florida Kanya, uh, not let down at all. Huge fan still. That's that's nice. <laughs> I like it. 
Uh, but yeah, no, I've been uh, I've been a fan of Florida Cana since 2015. That was the same year I learned about Papa Pilar, and that was actually the year I really went back in the rum. In high school, I was a whatever we got kind of guy. Well, yeah, no, so, in high school, everyone's a whatever you yeah, got kind of person. In my 20s, I got a little bit better, but my See, 30s is really where it kicked in, where when, I was like, this is what I like, this is what I'm going to do. When we were growing up, Everything was uh, Southern Comfort or UV Blue. Like you go, see, I missed the UV Blue. Okay. So mine was uh, Little King's, Mad Dog, Boone's Farm. Yeah. Then it was. See, uh, Boone's Farm was only if you could only go to the gas station and you couldn't go to an actual liquor store for whatever reason. No, it was when you were first trying to get laid. You had to buy like Strawberry Boone's Farm for the girls. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, that's fair. I would just feed a mad dog, but that's... Yeah, no, I don't know what kind of girls you were hanging out with, but... <laughs> the kind that drink mad dog. <laughs> so, when I started drinking mad dog, there was like four flavors. I used to take Kool-Aid packets with my buddies, and we would make our own freaking flavors. Now, the shelf's like this long with mad dog flavors, and I'm always like, I invented those. <laughs> The grape Kool-Aid one. Oh, yeah. yeah. There were some harsh ones when I was younger. Do, do people still buy Mad Dog? I hope not. <laughs> I, I would think they would. I, well, yeah. MD's been around forever. I mean, and yeah, I mean, you're, you're drinking a fortified wine. You're going to get forget, messed up. Now, uh, I totally forget what it stands for, but it doesn't stand for Mad Dog, I just found out recently. Did you really? Yeah, so M- Mad Dog 2020 is not Mad Dog 2020. Oh. MD stands for something else. People just gave it that name. All right. You so, know what? You know what you're going to do? Hmm. You're going to keep these guys busy while I look that up. You look that up, Steve. I just heard this and I flipped out. It was one of those things I like, how old were you when you found this out? You're yeah, like, today? No, I, I, see, <laughs> I see those all the time. I do, and I fall for a lot of them. I'm just like, wow, I was today years old. What do we got here, Steve? Uh, okay. So. You on there already? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on their website, but they don't even say. Okay, so what does MD for Mad, what does MD for Mad Dog 2020 stand for? Can't wait, because I, I was like, what? Mogan David. Mogan David. Mogan No wonder they call it David. Mad Dog 2020. Often called by its nickname Mad Dog is an American fortified wine. The MD actually stands for its producer, Mogan David. I bet Mogan David didn't like being called Mad Dog like Biff Tanner didn't like being called that in Back to the Future 3. That's probably a similar thing, because if I was Mogan David, I wouldn't either. I would Uh, go by Mad Dog. Mogan David... Uh, 2020 has an alcohol content that varies by flavor from 13 to 18%, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, originally, 2020 stood for 20, per- 20 ounces at 20% alcohol. So there you go. You learned something today from Matt. So did I. Mogan David. Uh, just forget it and call him Ed. You know what? That's just horrible. You know what, Mogan? Good for you, bud. Uh, way to get out there and just give How? your... Like, wow. okay, who can rebrand themselves like that? He's like, he grew up with the name Mogan. And he's like, he's like, you know what I'm going to do? And I'm going to call myself Mad Dog. And he just did it. And everyone in the world was just like, yeah. You fucking. can't nickname yourself. Yeah, you can if you're Mogan David. <laughs> Steve hates when I flip off the camera. It's just... It's not okay, you know? You guys didn't do anything. hanging out. You're one of my buddies. I should be able to flip you off. Sorry. That's true. It's like that, it's like that wrestler meme that the you, whole that point you of always this show. show. Dude, the whole point of this show is whoever's watching is sitting on the other side of this bar right now yeah. hanging out with us. I know. I just, I just want to clarify that like flipping off any random person that comes to hang out here probably isn't the best move either, but I support you 100%. But I've never yeah. had a problem so far. No. No, but you never do. So Why would I? Life's a breeze. Always. At least it always for me. I agree. They don't know our theme song, so it's not as funny for the audience. They're going to learn. They will learn. If you don't know our theme song, uh, Life is a Breeze, go on Spotify. Check out uh, The, the Broke Downs and do Life is a Breeze. Uh, those are friends of ours. And uh, Seriously, yeah. the Life is a Breeze 
uh, by The Broke Downs on Spotify. The rest of their music, awesome as well. Yeah. Seriously, good for you guys. Uh, uh, personal friends of ours. We're waiting for COVID to chill because I'd like to get them to come jam here in the garage as, with as us. As soon as COVID is over, we're going to be having an episode where you, where you will hear our intro theme, uh, but you'll hear it played live. We'll also be drinking with them and having a good time throughout it, maybe getting them to play a couple more songs. It's uh, going to be a good day. I can't wait. I cannot wait as well. That's going to be a phenomenal time. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, guys. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're about out of time for, for today's episode. Yeah. You all right over there? No, I was laughing at you. I know you were. That's <laughs> why so I was asking if you were all right. Cause, you know, uh, I'm great. Yeah, no, me too. How you doing? I, you know what? good. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know what? Four shots of rum in a row will do that to and pretty much anybody. And an 8.9% beer, he still hasn't finished. What? You? <laughs> no. That's fair. That's I'm going to drink this now. I think you should chug that and wish everybody a... Uh, a great night. All right, guys. You know what? I'm going to do just that. We're going to break into the rest of these uh, bottles a little bit more, try to experience them. You guys have an excellent night. Feel free to pick up these bottles as well and rewatch this video. Such a great time hanging out with you guys always. And as always, <laughs> I want to say how much I, uh, I appreciate you guys watching our show. It, it means the world to oh, us. Oh, wow. He's getting sentimental. And... You know what? Rum will do that to you. Rum makes you understand what's real in life. You know what I mean? No. I didn't think you did. No. I'm good anyway. on that. <laughs> All right, guys. You guys have a great night. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one. We're going to see you next time.